Good morning. I need to make a bunch of these little pipe candle holders. I've got some orders that I've been behind on for a while that need to get out. And this little fullering jig is my preferred tool for doing this. A spring fuller works okay, but if I have the choice, I prefer a, a pivoted fullering jig. And this is an all-fabricated tool. There's no blacksmithing involved in making it. But I thought you might be interested in it. So if you'd like to see how I made this tool, more or less, it's not going to be a detailed how-to, but let's go over to this morning and start back where I started, and we will see how this tool was made. Through the magic of time travel, we can go back and we can look at how I got to the point of the completed fullering jig. Now this is my original fullering jig. I made this probably in the early 90s and used it for years and years. It's made out of leaf spring for the, the arms, and one of them did eventually crack. I'm sure it had something to do with this welded on block up here. But it worked fine for a long time. It had a few small issues, and hopefully I've solved those in the new version. The biggest problem this one had is that I put quarter-inch holes in it to make the arm adjustable. And one, I rel rarely made adjustments, but two, I sheared this pin off over and over again. So it was really not a very good idea to use such small holes. And the one I'm going to do today, we're going to do half inch holes, and I think that will be a much better plan. Uh, that was really the main issue. The other issue is I probably made this a little bit too narrow, so it was easy to, to ding the edges of pipe when you were fullering it in here, and that's what I use it for most of the time. This block fell off a lot because it stresses the welds as you pound on it, but that's not a big deal. We'll just put it back on when it cracks and falls off. It's still worth it. It still saves the arms. It is one of the reasons it lasted as long as it did, and one of the reasons I think I can get by with just making today's version out of mild steel. So here are my arms. I've made a similarly deep half round grind or elliptical grind here for pipe but it's wider and I've rounded everything over so that's all ready to go and these pieces are 3 8 by one and a half mild steel 8 inches long and there's two of those and they make the arms I have another piece of 3 8 by inch and a half that is 9 inches long and it will become the base for these to sit on. And I have two pieces of quarter by two that are five inches long and these will become the the uprights that will have the adjustability so that this can pivot and be set at different heights. Although, as I said, I will rarely do that. I find that I use it for three-quarter pipe most of the time and that works just fine for me, but as long as I'm going to take the trouble to make it, I might as well take the trouble to make it adjustable. I will need to still cut a piece of one inch square or something to put up here as a strike block so that I don't mushroom this over, and I think the mild steel will last a whole lot longer with something to hammer on than it would if you were hammering right on the mild steel arms. And then the final piece is a hardy stem this is a U-shaped hardy stem that will allow me to put a wedge in if I ever want to. I doubt that I'll ever use the wedge, but it's an option that will be available if I need it. And it'll just weld on down here. Make sure you weld it square. It looks like something's a little off right now. But maybe the camera's just crooked. Hard to say. Anyways, um, you probably don't need this. A solid bar would work, but it was easy enough to forge the U-shaped stem, so that's what I'm going to go with on this. The first thing I want to do is run a parallel line down each side of the uprights so I can drill my pivot holes. This will allow for some adjustment. There will be two rolls of staggered holes and then on this arm I will also make two staggered holes so I can lift it and either pin here or pin here as it moves up the 
the arms. And I'll figure that out once I get the, the whole thing done. The first thing, though, is I need to know where my initial hole will be. I probably should have ground the radius on this after I drilled the hole. But So if I know that's there, and I know that I've set this a half inch in there, I'm going to want this first hole to be a half inch up. And that's on the, needs to be on the same side when they're together, so these are mirror images at this point. So that means a half inch up on this side. Hope that makes sense. And then I will stair step my holes. So I'm going to go a half inch between each pair of holes and on opposite sides. So this first hole is here, second hole will be there, third hole on the first side, opposite side. And I don't know if I've got enough room here to do another one or not. Yeah, I think I do. The odds of ever using all these holes are very slim. Now the best way to make sure your holes line up is to just drill them all at the same time. So if I clamp these together and drill both, my holes will line up front to back. Then I'll come back and I'll figure out exactly how I want to drill this. Because it will need a second hole in here. But I don't want it exactly offset just like this is. Or all I end up doing is just keeping the same spacing. You know, if, if this is offset there, then all I've done is create a second place I can pin for the same position, and I really only get the other holes, so I need to think about that a little bit. So center punch your marks. drill press and drill some holes. We have our two plates to make our adjustable tower or bracket, whatever you want to call it. And my original thought was to put a low hole and a high hole in this, but that really just duplicates the exact same position, so I might as well not have drilled so many holes. To get an adjustment at every single one of these points, my holes really need to be right next to each other. It seems like there should be a way to stagger these not quite the same and get some sort of a, a half adjustment point with each one, but I think that's pushing my luck and I'm not going to worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and mark these holes so that they're right next to each other. I just want to create a, a mark I can find to measure off of. I'm using a half inch transfer punch. It fits right in the half inch hole and gives me a perfectly centered mark. And by virtue of having these perfectly centered marks now, I can make lines that line up with my hole centers. And I can use my little Adjustable square to set three quarters of an inch for halfway. And now I know where my holes need to go. Center punch these. 
and go back to the drill press. What I want to do is make sure that I can pivot this if everything is in here tight. And that looks like I ground enough clearance for that to pivot and come down together. So that will work just fine. And the same thing is true for this hole. It will only pivot that far, but that's way more than enough. Now the other thing that we need to consider because I made a slight change in my hole placement on this bar, it means that I'm going to be up a little bit here. I've got a little space, but that's actually okay because that way I can get in there and weld that and I'll fill that up and it won't really matter. But it's something to make sure you don't weld this down tight and then suddenly these holes don't line up anymore. Now I have commented before that this channel is not going to be about fabrication and welding. So while I'm showing this tool, I'm not going to tell you exactly how to weld it up. If you're a fabricator or welder, I think you probably have better skills than I do, so go for it. I'm starting with the hardy stem on this because I think it'll be the hardest thing to do later. One important consideration is that this has to fit your hardy hole and sit flat on the anvil. If you get too much weld bead here, it probably won't fit. So almost certainly I will need to come back and grind this to make it fit the hardy hole. Next I'm going to weld the arms together. And I'm going to put just a little bit of thin cardboard in here. To act as a shim to guarantee that this doesn't seize up and I'll be able to pivot it when I'm all done. And you also want to make sure this is square. Again, if you're a welder or fabricator, that's all obvious stuff to you. And the other obvious thing is that I don't want my nice little square anywhere near the welder when I'm welding. So I'm going to put it in my pocket or go set it on the far side of the shop. I'm just going to tack weld that, flip the whole thing over, and then we'll tack weld the back side. With the hardy stem hung off the edge of the bench, I can get this all lined up and get it tack welded in place. The flooring jig is all welded up. And I've got a little strike plate on the top of it here. So the first thing to do before we put it in service is make sure we can actually get our holes to line up and it does and then does this pivot yes it does Pl opens plenty far enough to be useful and check the next hole and make sure it will open far enough oh pl plenty far enough so we're, we're a success there and you just adjust this depending on how heavy a material a lot of stuff will probably get done right in this area here and then I back that up with a nut just to keep the bolt in. This doesn't have to be tight. It's a pivot point. You could use a uh, pen and cotter keys if you wanted to. And this is a little bit sloppy here. 
So maybe my shim was too thick or maybe it bowed out when I welded it. I can heat this up in the forge or the torch right through here and I can squeeze that together very gently and that should solve that problem. I just heated this up with a torch right through here, just a very dull red, doesn't have to be real hot. Put my arm in and clamped it up so it can cool and hopefully when it cools it'll stay put and we'll see what happens. I think before I do the final assembly I'm just going to put a drop of oil on there. Probably doesn't need it, it's not going to be that tight a fit, nor is it that precise. And it works, it's a little bit snugger. So let's give it a little test run here, see how it works. One of the advantages to this kind of assembly, besides being adjustable, is that you can always take this arm out and that gives you access to both sides if you need to clean this up and make it pretty again if it starts to wear out. Again, this is just mild steel, so it may wear out faster than the leaf spring version did. So it does bounce around just a little bit. I can put a wedge in the, the hardy shank if I need to. And it's much more solid. So that's working very well. I'll do a little bit of work to do in here, so I might, might need to round that up a little bit. But otherwise, it's a finished tool. So that's it for our little adjustable fullering jig. It'll be a handy tool to have in the shop. It's all fabricated. There was no blacksmithing involved, and I apologize for that. And maybe someday we'll do some more that are purely blacksmithing. Certainly the spring fullers we have shown previously are, can be an all blacksmithing project. This will do the same job, it's just I like this version a little bit better and it's worth having the fabricated tool for my purposes. Doesn't mean you need one. So it's whatever you're comfortable doing. If you are fabricating and are looking at welding or buying your first welder, get good instruction on it. I'm not the guy to teach you how to use a welder. I've taken welding classes, but that doesn't make me an expert. It just means I can do the things I need to do with it, and that's all I do with it. I don't weld on people's cars, trucks, or anything like that. So, if you don't mind fabricating, this is a good handy tool, and you'll get years worth of use out of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to have to go back and film the part that we started with at the beginning of the video so that you know what kind of a video we're making or yeah, something like that. It's all that time travel stuff. Anyways, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Love it if you hit the subscribe button. Stick around, watch a few other videos, but then get out to the shop, make some new tooling, or use the tools you got and make something in the shop. But stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.